So this so-called alien transmitter receiver is not alien at all. It's a build by Dwight Ike Blevins, KW7T, and he sells this uh, both as a schematic only, so you can build it on your own, or he sells it as an assembled kit. And uh, this appears to be an assembled kit. It's beautifully made. Uh, it's also got the three plug-in coils, one for 40 meters, one for 80, and one presumably for 160 meters. So I didn't mean to infer that this was an alien device. Now, are there aliens in Colorado? Undoubtedly, you would find some there, but this is not that. So as we take this, uh, this little radio into consideration, uh, we'll go through the schematic, the basic principle of the design, and uh, then in the second part, we'll put it on the air and try to make some contacts. So why are one and two tube transmitter receivers so interesting to people? Well, it goes way back. Uh, here's a diagram from 1920 Radio Experimenter magazine. It is a high power Hartley oscillator. You can see it's a Hartley. Um, and they're keying this Hartley oscillator in the ground. So it is a transmitter, a CW transmitter. But notice they've also got some headphones. So with this grid leak, um, this could also uh, detect uh, CW transmissions in a uh, direct conversion manner. So when a CW signal is strong enough, it combines with the Hartley oscillator and you get the beat note in the phones. So here you go, a single tube transmitter receiver. Now this is not really practical because the conditions for the receiver and the conditions for the transmitter are totally opposite. Plus you'd, when you're receiving you'd be transmitting at the same time so it's not really a practical circuit. But they did publish it and it's interesting to think about it. Now in the 30s uh, we started to get some double tubes with two triodes for instance. And Frank Jones and many other people we're using uh, these dual triodes for all kinds of interesting circuits. And uh, one of them that came out of the 30s was the idea of using half of the tube as your receiver and half of the tube as your transmitter. This is a very simple Armstrong receiver uh, with, a, with a tickler coil. This is a very simple tuned plate uh, crystal cracker uh, transmitter. And with this switch, um, here you go, you've got a, a simple one tube transmitter receiver. Uh, this was revived in the 1950s and out west a company called Western Radio started to sell these as little kits and there's been a renaissance on this circuit and it's now currently available as a kit again as the BN1 uh, from West Kits that's been revived. Everybody knows about the Paraset. Uh, this was developed, of course, uh, in England uh, to be uh, dropped into the occupied countries in World War II. A practical transmitter receiver uh, uses three valves. And the third valve is an audio amplifier. Uh, because this was used with very, very uh, modest antennas, usually just a wire dropped out the window, they needed a little bit extra audio gain uh, with the Paraset. So it does have the extra audio amplifier tube and let me tell you with a regular ham antenna my Paraset that I built um, has way too much gain and I usually have to have the headsets resting on my shoulders rather than on my ears. If you attach my Paraset through a transformer to a speaker uh, many times it can drive the speaker quite easily. By the Paraset time frame, and really by the 1940s through the 50s, the Hartley oscillator does take over as the mainstream regenerative receiver for ham use, not for shortwave listening, not for all band plug-in coil, but for ham use on a single band usually, the Hartley type oscillator takes over. It's extremely uh, sensitive and very, very stable and you don't see the Armstrong circuit. 
after the 40s, at least in the ham uh, magazines. So in 1964, Practical Wireless uh, takes a shot at a two-tube uh, transmitter receiver, um, and it uses a couple of those uh, triode pentode 6AW8 style valves. Uh, one is, of course, the uh, Pierce oscillator with a little amplifier for the transmit side. And on the receive side, we have a Armstrong receiver with a uh, one stage of audio amplification. So as we get back into KW7T, uh, Dwight's uh, design, I want to show you kind of the bones of it, which is just two tubes. We have two pentodes. And these could be any small beam power pentodes, everything from a 6V6 to a 6BQ5 uh, could be used uh, in this circuit. Uh, the circuit really doesn't care. So all of these are uh, good candidates uh, for a regenerative receiver uh, using the, the Hartley style and a uh, coal pits oscillator. Uh, we're probably talking about 2 watts out, maybe 3 watts if the wind is right, and uh, a fairly sensitive receiver. Now you'll need some high impedance uh, magnetic headphones or a uh, good uh, crystal earpiece uh, to be able to uh, hear anything out of a single tube. Uh, like the Paraset, this particular uh, setup usually uses two inductors, one for the transmit side, one for the receive side, and they're usually separate coils. Like on the Paraset, they're separate. Here they could be two plug-in coils. Now, uh, one of the very clever things that uh, Dwight does with his design is he combines the two onto a single plug-in coil. So by using an octal base and building his own plug-in coil sets, he puts all of the windings on the same coil. Now, he does not have the input link winding uh, that typically you would have. Uh, he disposes of that and reverts back to top coupling. I suppose the, uh, the plug-in coil would have become just too complex by adding uh, four windings on it instead of three. So this regen would be conventional, but uh, he's trying to run it on 12 volts, and of course that didn't work. Didn't quite have enough voltage to make a 12A6 or a 12L6 work. Uh, so you have to add some. So He's cleverly just put a 9 volt battery in series with the 12 volts, and uh, that gets us up, you know, that gets us up around 20 volts for the regen. I still think this is a little shy. I think I would have put two 9 volt batteries on there and gotten it up into the 20s, but uh, apparently there are, there's enough feedback here uh, for this to work on 20 volts. So also, uh, What's, what, what else is clever here? Uh, oh, we have this onboard multi-vibrator power supply. This is offboard in the Paraset, by the way. They make the, uh, the high voltage with a vibrator supply. He's using a multi-vibrator, a very simple multi-vibrator, uh, and uh, producing his high voltage for the transmitter, which is completely separate from the receiver. Also, uh, because we're using such low voltage on V1, you do need to amplify this somewhat to get decent audio. So he shows as an option adding a single transistor uh, to the phones. Uh, notice the switching. Uh, there's switching that shorts out the audio. There's switching that shorts out the input of the receiver when you're in transmit mode. So as I said, I'm not going to be uh, publishing the hand-drawn schematic uh, that Dwight did. However, um, you know that I like to redraw schematics, you know that I like to have period correct schematics, and I like to have schematics that are very easy to read. I feel that's important for, especially for beginners and people just getting into radio. But that doesn't mean I don't appreciate hand-drawn schematics. And I think hand-drawn hand schematics of any kind are very, very interesting. This is a phonograph amplifier circuit that was drawn for me by a radio TV man that was a friend of my dad's. Um, it's absolutely amazing. It's an off-the-line Widowmaker 
um, audio amplifier um, could be used as a phono amplifier or a guitar amplifier even uh, made with the octal tubes of the day that you would find in a All-American 5 receiver and I uh, I have the actual date because it's it's written on a, a, a church thing here from 1971 so the 19th of May 1971 was where this piece of paper came from so I would have been 14 uh, years old when I received this parts list and this beautifully hand-drawn schematic that's drawn in a way that you can actually hook up it's drawn in a way that you can actually hook up the wires to the tube pins as you're looking down very very clever very well drawn uh, hand diagram So I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the uh, KW7T uh, transmitter receiver, two tubes, two 12-volt tubes. And uh, next, uh, let's see if we can get this thing on the air.